So, the latest. So, let, uh, please introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Ching Tang. Oh. And um, is it true that you invented the OLEDs? Uh, that's true. How many years ago now? In 1978. 78. And, uh, how's your feeling uh, knowing that it's changed the world so much? Like so many people use the OLED, right? Well, I'm happy to see you, all that being used, you know, the variety um, is uh, for researchers that's some, you know, it's a good reward. It makes just, you feel, just make you because feel not everybody can research something that becomes such a big success, right? Many people research for stuff and it's hard to see where their impact goes. Well, I mean, in, in most research, uh, particularly, you know, the one that I know about, uh, OLED. Um, I, you know, you came up with the idea, or maybe you accidentally uh, ran into it, uh, and you discovered, you know, 50 years ago. Not, not quite 50 years ago. But, uh, the, the point is that it takes tremendous amount of effort, not just yourself, your your team. Uh, in my days at Kodak, and you also have to have somebody willing to invest in manufacturing. And, and that's not how you have it today. So it's not a single man effort. It's a tremendous industry. Being, but maybe I, I, I can take a little credit being the first one to come up with it. So, and that, is it by chance? It is Did somewhat, you come up by chance with it? Or you focus on this direction? Yeah, I focus on that one direction. And then all that came about, and then I refocus. So you can say it's by accident. And um, is it, how did you manage to, or did you have to convince more and more people to join and, and to work on this direction? Or no, is it thanks to Display Week? Like 45 years ago, there was a Display Week and everybody's like, wow, and everybody says, okay, I want to invest one billion or? No, I mean, uh, basically the invention was to switch the material. You have LED at the time, but you don't have organic material-based LED. So once that was, even that was not discovered by myself. It's something called the organic electroluminescence that was discovered maybe a hundred years ago. All right. So, but you you get it down to uh, a practical level. Not practical, but you know, in research-wise. It's practically enough for you to invest in to uh, to invest time into it, um, and so it's a switch from semiconductor, crystalline semiconductor, to organic amorphous material. That is a major change, and after that, everybody recognizes that that's a good material to use, and you have something today. How good is it today? Is it much better than you could imagine, oh, or is it not as good as you? hope it should be. No, no, it's much better than I uh, expected. So Much uh, better. Mu much, these are, much better. These are, if we check this one, for yeah. example. So, so This one is a, it's an organic based display, right? But the biggest the challenge is to put the RGB together. And they try to use a very brutal effort. Let me go close like this. What do you say? Put what together? to put it together yeah, he, uh, in a... Can come a little bit closer? Yeah. In a photolithography. Yeah, sorry, I'm just trying. A fit photolithography. The photolithography is the base to make the RGB pixels. Nice. I'll be doing a video with you just after about, about this, uh, so you can introduce. So, uh, I, I was just on a Uber, and there was this guy with a foldable Samsung phone. And he this. said it was the third one he already bought. <laughs> and like, so many people have foldable, flexible. Yeah. Is this enabling some flexibility? No, I think this one to get one step further. One step further. Yeah. All right. I'm it, not trying to do a commercial for that. No, no, but, of course. But uh, the, the, normally, you do it by shadow masking. Yeah. Even the foldable. But this one, they come pretty eliminate shadow masking, which is a big deal. Wow. All right. So, but it will take some time for them to, um, you know, commercialize it and uh, really bring the cost down and so on. 
All right. What's uh, all this stuff you talk about, the shadow masking and everything, was that already happening 30 years ago? No, 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 no. The shadow masking happened maybe 15 years ago or something, 15, 20. When that, that, that enabled all the technology. Because LCD and all those, they, they use photolithography mainly. But all that requires shadow masking technology to put down the RGB. Except for the TV. TV completely use different technology. The, I'm uh, very happy with my uh, OLED TV. And I was trying a little bit with the with a, uh, LCD, but I, my, my wife, she said, no, no, we need to get the OLED. <laughs> when she looked at the store, you know, how, how the quality. And now this, uh, these guys, uh, they also, uh, not only doing the phone displays, now they do the TVs. Um, it's, it's a completely different world. The OLEDs on TVs and mobile, no. or is it very similar? The OLED TV has credit to, to not to Samsung, to LG. LG is the one who pioneered the TV. Yeah. So you should go to their booth to see yeah. the OLED TV. But now they're also doing the OLED TVs, right? But they come later. They, they came a few much years later. later. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's still OLED TV, but the, 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 the technology gets started uh, uh, by, you know, first at Kodak and then the LG and the TV. Is it amazing to think in the, the, the scale of these companies, how much you invest in the factories? Uh, you, you can sit there you can, and you, you imagine? You can ask them how much money they, they spend on their, <laughs> yeah. On yeah. their investments. I mean, how much money you spend on the investment? Uh, how much the investment that you have to make to build an old TV manufacturing line? Uh, <laughs> it's a secret, right? <laughs> For now, it's a secret. Yeah. It's a secret, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So no, I said it, 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 they're talking about in a unit of $100 million. It could be 10 or such unit, okay, a few of those, but a unit $100 million <laughs> to build Whoa. a manufacturing manufacturing. But uh, you know, there's, uh, now we're 8 billion people. Everybody needs an OLED, right? Uh, so it's no. a good investment. I, I don't think everybody would need an OLED. <laughs> no? Not everybody? No, I mean, you need to put food on your mouth first. <laughs> All right, but okay. maybe it can become more and more affordable? Is that yeah, possible? It will. It, it definitely will be more and more affordable. Do people want to print them? That's difficult. Well, I mean, they can do the evaporations. The printing would come whenever they can make it. But it's not there yet. All right. Uh, it's, uh, it's true you, you got the Nobel Prize? No. No? No? <laughs> no? You should? No? Okay. All right. All right. How about uh, meeting all your colleagues here? Huh? That's what you're going to do now. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I would just run around to walk around and, uh, you know, to see what's new here. Okay. Thank well, you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Let me give you my card. I have it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. It's there, right there. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi. My name is... So cool. You guys can send me some money. You can send me money on WISE. It's really smart. Oh, you don't have to send me money. You can send money to your friends, to your family. Are they in a different country? Do you need to use currency tra transfer, like to different country transfer? Do you need to pay for stuff? Do you want to travel around the world and pay for stuff? Tiny little fees. It's so much cheaper. This is a Visa debit card. Uh, check out my video where I explain some more. It works in 100 countries all over the world maybe 150, it's crazy. And it's really amazing and it's free. You can sign up, use your Android Pay, your Apple Pay, or order this optional seven euro debit card and just pay for stuff around the world. It's great to pay for stuff, right? Or send some money, tiny little fees, it's smart. Check it out.